I just got six hard. <laughs> Before I start today's video, I just want to say big thank you to all those of you guys that have checked out the combat achievement stuff for Mr. Iron Bar, especially on the last video. Really appreciate the support. The motivation is definitely rising once again. It's been a really uh, tough past month or two, not just in RuneScape because of all the learning on all these sweaty things that have to do for these Grandmaster tasks, but also just IRL, you know, it's been a bit stressful lately, but we're good. We're going to finish this on time. Last video, we finished all of the God Wars combat achievements, leaving us essentially the Tazar related combat tasks like Fight Caves and the Theater of Blood combat tasks for full completion. This video will be covering arguably the hardest group combat task in the entire combat achievements, which is the Theater of Blood Grandmaster Speed Task. Just like the Cox Team Task, top team tasks have very similar issues of needing to gather the right people and setting times to practice and do the task. Except the people who you can take are even more strict than the Chambers ones, making this even harder than Chambers group tasks. So there are four team speed tasks in Theater of Blood Normal and three team speed tasks in Hard Mode Theater of Blood. You might be thinking Hard Mode times must be harder, but nope, it's not harder. The four team Grandmaster speed tasks from Normal Top are actually a ton harder than the Hard Mode ones, just due to the Normal ones requiring such a faster time requirement. A long while ago, I had completed the dual Grandmaster time with a friend with no speedrunning experience, both of us, and it took us ages. That leaves the 3 to 5 man task for both normal and hard mode top. There are many factors that make these top speed tasks so difficult. The first one is obviously the skill set needed to get the times. The second is finding people to either practice with or experience people to essentially guide you along the way and carry. I prefer to just go with friends and learn with them just because it feels more fulfilling. But the practice would take many days or weeks. I often ran into problems where one or two of my friends could not commit to the multiple day practice. Since in a team of 3 to 5, it was unrealistic to have everybody show up every day. So I had to make some compromises and got some experienced speedrunners to help fill in some of the team slots. After many days and weeks of practice, I finally managed to get all these tasks done and I will cover them as the video unravels. So each of the top speedrun Grandmaster tasks have their own unique set of strategies that are somewhat unique to those team sizes. I will try to cover some of the notable ones throughout each task. The trio Grandmaster time for normal top is 1730, which is fast, of course, from a non speedrunner's perspective, and they're all going to be like that. For this task, you want around 220 Maiden, a 130 Bloat, a 430 Nilo, a 210 Dark Beast, a 220 Zarpis and a 440 Fursic. These were the approximate goals for each room. Nalo is the one room where you can save the most time, but it requires a ton of speedrunning practice to really go lower in any team size. There are 33 ways of Nalo spawns and the theory crafting involved to maximize efficiency in that room is too complicated to explain here as I personally never mastered it. I typically did melee rolls for threes for Nalo and my roll is probably the simplest as I try to kill as many melee Nalos as possible. And I don't have to worry about things like pre-firing, things coming along the different sides. There isn't too much else to explain outside of Nilos because it's mostly just being good at DPSing the rooms. And landing Warhammers and BGS at the Dark Beast and Sarpis room, which is the RNG components. There is the May skipping strategy with it in our order attempts to save 10 to 20 seconds using uh, Phoenix necklaces and combo eats running straight across the maze, courtesy of Mr. A Cold One at Dark Beast, but we didn't use that for the finishing run because I ran with a different team. Yep. Oh! Killed it before? That's a, that's a really good Verzik. We need that Verzik. Sub 5. That's what we need, boys. We need that Sub 5 Verzik. Oh, new PB though. Okay, that's good. 438. Let's go. That's what we need. Alright, not bad, not bad. That's That's not bad. Here we go. 434, okay, all right, that's our best one so far, for sure. 423, oh, fat, 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 let's go, that's fat. Mm -mm. Oh, we did it! <laughs> Hopefully, this shit, oh, 1845. <laughs> what? Oh, well, it didn't matter. It was 0.4%. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, that first like, sucks. I mean, the moment we failed crabs, it was GG. Yeah. A new rec new PB though, apparently. Claws, big, big, big. Oh, big hit. Let's go. What do we get? Good luck, boys. Good luck. Good luck. No way! Four seconds. God. 444, dude. That's so troll. So there's a few variations in how fast the Nilos will actually show up from the sides if you enter at certain times. So if you could time it right, you could save a few seconds just by entering Nilo right. Yeah, that was hella fast. That definitely saves time. So for pretty much every single speedrun at normal top for Grandmaster time, you want to make sure you finish first like phase 2 aka the blood phase within 2 red crab spawns. If you have to go to a third one, you're gonna lose like 20 plus seconds and it really will cost a run. So this is where the emphasis comes in with depending on who you go with, the times can be quite different. So me and my friends ended up getting really close to the time. Only missed by 4 seconds, but for the final task completion though, I went with one really experienced speedrunner and one other person that completed this task already. And me, of course, being already really close, and we smashed it by quite a bit. That's so free. <laughs> yeah, definitely a uh, task done right there. 1711, Jesus. The 4-man Grandmaster time for normal top is 15 minutes flat, which was honestly harder than the threes because they allowed less room for non-experienced team members to make the cut. The split goals were similar to the threes but subtract a good 20 seconds from each room. Maiden room changes slightly because this is when we start stacking the first crab spawn with the second crab spawn alongside the final crab skip to save a ton of time. Stacking crabs involves clawing and scything the maiden after 70% to push it down to 50% super fast allowing both spawns to be frozen on top of each other so that mobbing them with chins and barrage is possible. Whee! Other than that, the rest of the runes were mostly the same strategies, except of course Nilo has his own set of nuances where there's an extra person focusing on the melee role. First like Phase 1 also starts getting more complicated as the staff specking procedures become very different and each person has their own specific rotation to follow. Doing the right strategies could save a ton of time in the first phase of Verzik. Screw it, just gonna tank. I have a lot of food. Oh shit, okay, that was really fast. Ooh, and we killed it before it changed phases. 353. Okay, that's decent. So that's that's a PB for me. 353. Oh, the heat. Oh, damn. We'll see. We'll see. Easy? Was that fast? Oh, damn. Two seconds. Oh, my days. Wow. Even that heal didn't stop it. Dude, that P1 pillar was so fast, dude. We had a really rough blow. Two of us died before we even finished it. So we had to finish that off. Maiden was, you know, rough. Nala was our best. My best, at least, in, in the four man. And the Verzik came in clutch. The five man Grandmaster for normal is 14 minutes and 15 seconds. And it is similar difficulty to the fours, mainly because the time cutoff for an extra person is 45 seconds. But still, it's not friendly to non speed running team members. I did the mage rolls at Maiden and Nalo. 5 man Maiden speedrunning mage roll is actually really hard, but I was happy to have gone quite decent at it. You need to be extremely attentive to when the Nalos would spawn, because you have to shift between hitting the boss and predicting when the crabs would spawn without wasting ticks not doing anything. This also involves fast gear switching and clicking accurately every time. The 5 man strategy is mostly the same except in some rooms. At Bloat, you can 1 down it if you have 2-3 to three people go in using P next to wear down its HP before it stops. It's a very tricky method and it's not iron friendly, so it was up to experts to do their thing. 
One down blow would save a fat 40 seconds. For Nilo, there's now two majors and two melees. Also, Versic P1 has his own speedrunning strategies as well, 4 5 specifically. But I never got good enough to be able to explain it properly, but essentially, again, saves a lot of time just like in the 4 man version. Personally, I brought a magic cape to switch from Ancients to Arceus so I can use the thralls after the Nilo room to really secure the time. And it was a really smart uh, decision for sure. You'll see why. 151. There we go. Much better. All right, just gotta do the crabs a little better at first. Like... Oh damn. The crab. That's so unfortunate with the crab, man. Okay, everybody's uh, looks like they're potting up. This is the literally the ultimate like setup right now for me. Literally, spellbook swap into thralls, man. Okay, that was definitely a lot faster than... Yep, 353, okay. Definitely the best I've done personally. So in a 5-man speedrun, because of 5 people, the crab spawns in phase 2 and phase 3 is insane amount. You'll have like sometimes 5 crabs coming from different directions trying to kill everybody. So there are strategies to try to avoid them, but yeah, this is a very dangerous part of the 5s. Damn. Yeah, there's just way too many spiders, guys. Man, that was unfortunate, dude. The heal. Oh, damn. The crab. That's so unfortunate with the crab, man. Ah, oh, good luck. Good luck, good luck. Yo, we literally made it on the dot. Oh my fucking god, dude. Oh my god. Fuck this task. Oh my days, bro. Fuck this task. Seriously. Now we talk about hard mode top. So hard mode top requirement is way more lenient. So I was happy to just do this with my non-speed running friends. The time task for Harmo Top also includes the lobbies between the bosses, so you cannot waste time idling. We didn't need to do any of the strategies that the normal speedrun task required, so it was a lot more chill. No maiden skipping, no fancy one down bolts required. At least in the threes, but we definitely did maiden skip fours and fives because they were pretty free. But yeah, other than that, that was it. 21. Yeah, we spent a lot talking. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Damn, grads. Dude, grats. So for Harmo Top, Nilo King, the final boss, there's a few variations of where people usually uh, go to when they split up when the range phase shows up. And this one that you're seeing now, it's probably the best one where you go northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest of the boss. This works really well because the melee guy sometimes, it moves around when it transitions to melee. And it can really mess up the uh, other method where someone DDs in the middle. So this is much more uh, reliable. Uh, that was that was a bit rough on my end there. Oh, we did it! Oh, wow! We still made it by 19 seconds, and someone died too. Wow! It is pretty free. <laughs> it actually is pretty free. Wow! All right. Okay, I'll tank. I'll tank now. I'm just gonna go in and out so that way we can like take turns tanking. Uh, this is still pretty free though, for sure. So Zarpus and Harmo on the final phase, there's four corners that people can step on, but there's five people. So that means two people have to attack at the same time. So that's a little tricky, but you should be pretty decent with your takes to be able to time it. So. No way, dude. I killed two of them. Oh, watch out for... Uh... Okay, good. Yep, sweet. Oh, I still got my sniping shit. Oh, dang it. Uh, you guys should be able to kill it, though. <laughs> should be good, at, I think. Right? Oh, really? Yeah. 
What was it? What is the time? 19 minutes? Uh. Okay, that was the first one though. 35 seconds. Not bad. Or 29. A lot better. A lot better. Just go straight to the pillar, boys. Oh, huge hits too. Oh my god, I'm literally I'm hitting 400s every single time right now. Damn, that's a fat PB if I've seen one. <laughs> wow, we barely just made it though. How? <laughs> Damn, what the hell? Yeah, that dark beast. Bad RNG. Couldn't hit specs. But I think we're probably still chilling though. Oh, we did it! Teamwork wins the dream work. Easy, poggers. That was a task done somehow. Worth. Oh, okay. Hopefully we did it. Grats PB. Yeah, that should be a PB. Let's see. We should be uh 2140 boys. We didn't even get good RNG on. The Dark Beast, and we didn't really get the skip on P2 Verzik, but um, somehow we managed to complete two tasks. Teamwork makes the dream work, and um, also, you know, of course, the, the trio speedrun. So all the hard mode speedrun times are done. Fun little Grandmaster challenge called the uh, Barrows task. So there's one Grandmaster task at the where you have to use Barrows gear, and this is definitely more of a fun challenge than it is like a super difficult challenge uh, i will say though it took us two tries but uh, it was a silly mistake which you'll see very soon but yeah this challenge is use only barrels weapons you don't need the armor luckily but yeah i'm rocking full void with carol's bow for range aram staff with full ancestral for magic because i'm freezing and full guthans for melee slash shielding So the rooms are all incredibly slow, of course, with these weapons, but um, it's not too hard. It's just slower. That's it, really. And I switched over the thralls after my mage rolls are done just for extra damage because thralls honestly make up such a big impact on time save. And honestly, without it, we probably would have been there for many more minutes at a time. There was one huge problem, though. None of us brought anything poisonous. You really want like a Serp Helm or something for the purple crab on phase 2 Verzik. Because we didn't have poison, it was really hard to do phase 2. And that's the reason why we failed is because we basically ran out of supplies at the very end even though we managed to clear phase 2. So on the second attempt, we uh, modified our rolls a lot better. I brought a Serp Helm and I also dedicated myself to killing the Red Nilos and having another person do the same on each side and we were able to clear that problematic phase super easily one more hit boys finish it let's go that was fast that didn't take 40 minutes that's for sure 36 minutes let's go haha <laughs> that was actually pretty fast yeah we went in with the strats let's go oh someone got a purple Damn! At least we're getting money. Whose is it? Oh, money! You sure you don't want to split, bro? <laughs> Yo, let's go! <laughs> you can take a split if you want. <laughs> what? Alright, let's open this up. First one. Damn it, dude. So sad. Just junk. Third, second one. Pet. Alright, last one. Here we go. Damn, junk, boys. Just junk. Ooh, I didn't even realize the animation was, was that rad. Awesome. Perfect use for the clue scrolls. 
Let's open up some clues. We got our uh, three masters in a row as usual. First one, come on, here we go. Please be good. Please be good. Uh, it's, it's a mimic, never mind. So we're almost done with the combat achievements. Like I said, it's just the Tazar stuff and a little bit of theater of blood left. And also the master rank will be coming up soon, which will be super strategic for the Jads and Zugtas since you're allowed to get two Jads or two Zugs assigned at a time, which will make a lot of these tasks a lot easier. So in the next video, we'll be covering a lot of that.